All right, here's another Class E setup, basically based around this oscillator, this uh, Schmidt trigger oscillator, which basically I got that idea from my man Lab Coach right here. And he's got a video on one he made right here. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, I figured, all right, well, I'll try that then. Um, never thought of that before. Kind of figured it wouldn't really work so well, uh, but it actually does work pretty good. So it's using the 74HC14. We got a, I think it's like a 5K, yeah, 5K pot, and I uh, can't quite remember the uh, capacitor value I've got. I don't know, something like 150 picofarad maybe. But I'm using this guy in uh, a fairly expensive fit, and I started off with an 18 volt gate drive. And the way I've got this guy set up, I was getting a pretty clean square wave up to about I don't know 10 megahertz, something like that. And uh, after that, started to sort of slope around, but up to 10 megahertz or so it was pretty decent uh, you know with some nice variation there but at that 18 volt drive which is about the max that I could feed this chip it was just too much for it once I started getting over about 2 megahertz I've just got fairly low gate resistance here no external capacitance at the moment all these capacitors here these two plus this little one and the two on the back are across the drain this little stack here is just on the rails that I had two of these chips and the first one more or less immediately fried. It was kind of weird. Um, I was first driving it through a signal generator and at about 2 megahertz or so, which is about the bottom end of how I got this set, this thing set, you know, about 2 megahertz is as low as it'll go. Uh, but once I started to get maybe 4 or 5, I kind of casually started swinging the knob a little bit too quickly. So I think I probably swung it from about 2 to 6 megahertz or so. But so once it got to about 6, that thing like just immediately cooked. I heard it fry and uh, didn't take any time to do it. So this second one here, I've been kind of you know feeling it out a little bit so I've ran it up to about 4 megahertz after backing the gate drive down to only 12 volts so back to 12 volts again seems to work alright like it does on my other ones so with that arrangement you know 12 volt drive this gate driver that MOSFET seems to work fine and I feel like I've uh, I do have a little fan on here just in case but I can probably leave it at about 6 megahertz where this is and that gate drivers you know it might just get a little warm all right, so I'll put this guy closure here, and uh, so you can see I've got this coil hooked up to it. A little extra leakage there. Ended up with something like uh, close to three nanofarad on the uh, drain there. All right, so I'm gonna get this guy going. And I can, uh, oh, let's see. I'm just cutting all the way up at uh, 31. So it's pulling about three amps. But not bad, not bad, but uh, that's just how this is tuned in particular at the moment. So again, fairly stiff, square wave drive, uh, almost 3.6 megahertz. Yeah, so that's with the Schmidt trigger oscillator. And uh, I can, uh, with the 5K pot here, I can vary that frequency around and it's fairly similar to uh, the PLL setup I had going so yeah that's pretty cool I like how that runs pull some pretty hot little arcs off there it's about like 90 watts something like that and I don't know the heat sink I've got it on I have been running this thing on and off for a while now and I'm trying to see if it's really developing any heat can't really feel any warmth developing so that's good it could still be a uh, better tuned gate driver I've got this tiny little quiet fan on it seems to keep it to the point where I can't really ever feel heat
All right, so I just got some of these guys in. Took off these FKPs, put those guys on instead, it's right there. I did realize, you know, with some help of uh, some consultation from professional experience, I'm probably unwisely using these uh, Dip 8 chips right here. You know, it really doesn't make sense, honestly. I should be using some surface mount chips that's got some type of pad on the bottom so they can uh, dissipate more power. Uh, so, while these do kind of work, um, be much better off with the uh, heatsink package. So, that's what I'm going to go with next time. Alright, so, swap those guys out. 2 megahertz is as low as the uh, Schmidt Trigger oscillator will go with the uh, values that I've got. And swing that up. Actually, just with this 5K pot, for example, I'm just going to slowly vary it. So you can see, I can swing it pretty quick, but I guess I still have enough variation to where uh, I can do some fairly fine tuning there. But as I'm swinging it, maybe I can show the uh, the wattage also. So that 2.77 watts right there, that's uh, the powering the logic, so which is predominantly that gate driver. So you can see 2 megahertz, about 2 watts with this setup. Fairly stiff gate drive there um, you know not nothing too crazy but I think that's uh, about a little under two ohms gate resistor no external capacitance and as I'm swinging it you can see I'm creeping up to about the three watt region right so that's a little under five but this coil is running somewhere closer to this region, right? A little under four. Uh, so I've recently been trying to not really bring it too crazy high above uh, four and a half megahertz or so uh, because at a certain point that, that chip's going to start cooking. Uh, but once I replace that with a uh, heat sinked gate driver, then I should be fine. But anyway, you know, that's the uh, gate on the FET. And the uh, actual Schmidt trigger oscillator is putting out, you know, something much cleaner than that. All right, so get that going, and I'm gonna have it at uh, I don't know, about three and a half megahertz. So that's what that's looking like. It's pulling a little over two and a half watts gate drive, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put the primary at uh, 31 volts. So I'm just gonna kick that on what it's looking like it's not perfectly tuned but it's pretty close with the uh, three nanofarad it's very low uh, gate resistance value um, still ringing too much for my taste hopefully with the uh, different coil won't really have that problem but again it does run this little chapstick coil pretty good I remember the uh, first setup I had trying to run that again it wasn't wasn't too great and I had to rely on the self-oscillating sign drive to sort of pull it off. Um, so while that one ran, it got pretty pretty warm. I wasn't able to run it for long. I think this is switching good enough to where, you know, something like this, I could just run that pretty much forever. It's probably not ever going to heat up. Um, heat sink is fairly big. Of course, what it is doing is... It's heating up, you know, this little chapstick coil. It's like 40 gauge wire. So just pushing that little bush out, it's heating everything up so much that uh, it starts getting this metal so hot that it wants to melt the former and stuff. So again, I really wish I could run a little tiny coil like that, but I, I wound all that wire on something that would just freaking melt, pushing too much power. So that wasn't very smart. But I can, you know, bust out the little plasma bush there pull a nice little flame catching some of that shit on fire but again it runs runs pretty good that's not that's not too bad i don't think that's too bad i think it's getting you know pretty good deal out of these uh through hole gate drivers and um again i'm pretty sure i could do this at maybe four and a half megahertz maybe five megahertz without much problem and that's going to be with the 12 volt gate drive this particular sick fit, and um, you know, with with trying to pull off the fairly stiff drive like that, 
So yeah, I like that. So now that I know that works, um, I'm just basically going to try to wind a little bigger coil. Slightly bigger, bigger wire, thicker wire obviously. But I'd like to have that 4 megahertz flame. So again, that's probably right about where I'm going to have, have it running. Something like that, right?